First, I'll tell you a story about something that happened in Glendale. It's very interesting. I was looking for the statue, and I asked, where's the Comfort Women statue? They had no idea what I was talking about. I was actually a little <laughs> shocked, because here's two guys from Glendale that don't even know about the statue that everybody in Japan knows about. <laughs> <laughs> and so it might look like Americans are constantly just saying something bad about Japan, but believe me, that's not true. And then, of course, you might have some issues. It's interesting that the real revisionists are the ones who are calling the people who know that this is fake, they're calling, they're calling you revisionists. The, the real revisionists are the ones that made up this fiction to begin with. Back to IWG. And again, the history of the IWG is as interesting as the IWG report itself. And, uh, and the annex is also fascinating. So you see here in the meeting in 2003, March 2003, uh, Global Alliance is mentioned again. These are minutes of a meeting that deal with IWG, creating the IWG. So you can see that they anticipate, it says right here, tremendous disappointment over the relatively few classified documents on the Asian <coughs> front that have been located. And specifically, they're talking about Global Alliance will be disappointed. Well, who cares what Global Alliance thinks? Uh, obviously, the people doing this report cared uh, because Global Alliance was constantly there. And I, I believe that, and I believe others here will believe the same, that many people actually believe that there was a sex slave trade going on. They they're true believers. They're wrong, but, they, but they're not lying. They're just wrong. And this is an interesting line for those who, who uh, can read English. Uh, many activists within the Global Alliance and the Asian American community had assumed that through IWG efforts, a large number of documents would be found, but such has not been the case. The, the next sentence is also extremely interesting. Many of these interested citizens lack a sense of closure and are concerned about a cover-up and lack of high-level interest in the Asian theater. Or I'll just summarize it. Uh, that they, they were... A lot of people seem to think that there may have been a cover-up. And there's a lack of interest, right? This is important. Oh, oh by the high levels in Washington. But <clears throat> check out the date on this report and remember what was going on in that year. The United States was at war. Uh, we were in war in Afghanistan and Iraq. And, uh, in fact... Uh, in many other places. Actually, we're usually at war somewhere. But this was a particularly, obviously, big one. And so they're worried about lack of high-level interest while we've got a war unfolding. The last thing that anybody cares about is the IWG report, our global alliance. I mean, we were concerned more about Taliban and Al-Qaeda, of course. But here are these guys thinking that they're at the center of the universe and that Washington should stop what they're doing to help the Chinese and Koreans <coughs> sue Japan. And, and this slide just continues with that. For those who photographed it, you can read it later. And here is a, another meeting in 2004. And here, again, we see they're talking about including the fact that a relatively small number of documents relating to Japanese war crimes remain classified at the beginning of the IWG. Most of the records, as we know, had already been declassified before the IWG. And again, we get nothing, 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 every step of the way. And so the only thing that they can think of is that it's a cover-up. Well, we didn't cover up for the Nazis, did we? And so, you know, obviously there's, everywhere we look, we're finding nothing. Oh, this is an interesting gentleman, uh, Mr. Jack Yang. I think we'll just skip this one because we're going to be running low on time. <laughs>